All right, what is up, everybody? This is Jay Dumont. Uh, this is going to be a quick video, giving you some beginner tips for Outward. If you don't know what Outward is, <clears throat> current do, currently doing a let's play of it on my channel. It's an open world RPG slash adventurer sim, and what adventurer sim means is that it has survival elements, and it's a simulation of being an adventurer. So it's a really cool game, I like it a lot. And here are some tips to start with. So you start the game and you wonder, what do I do? Well, a good tip is to get the quest in the starting village from the Turnbull chick and she'll send you to a mushroom cave with pretty easy enemies called troglodytes and if you have a weapon and some armor you can clear that cave and sell your loot so generally once you travel out further to join a faction after some time you're going to need to prepare more for the journey so you're going to have to buy food you're going to want some bandages you're going to want some water you can collect fresh water uh, you're going to want either a bedroll or a tent if you can afford it to sleep in and that's pretty much it. As you go, if you have to cook something or boil water or something, you can gather from a tree. Any tree will let you gather three wood to make a campfire with, so that's useful. Keep in mind the game is not level scaled, which means that every enemy you come across is not necessarily an enemy that you can defeat at the moment you see them. So you're going to want to run a lot from enemies at the start of the game. Sometimes if you see two bandits, you may not be able to kill them. You may just want to avoid the battle and run from them. You can run from enemies in the game, and they'll eventually give up their chase if you sprint and you run away from them. So you'll have to do that a bit at the start and pick your battles. Uh, it's useful at the start when you fight um, and you do pick your battles, you'll want to loot the materials that you get from the downed enemies and they can help you in crafting they can give you meat free meat to cook um, you can even find armor if you do manage to be able to kill two bandits at the start they have a chance of dropping some pretty good armor and uh, weapons that you can use so I would suggest trying to kill the bandits as soon as you could you may need to set traps and lure them into the traps, which is useful. Or you may need to develop your own playstyle and figure something else out to kill them. But if you can kill the bandits, you can often get good pieces of equipment, especially armor drops that they drop at the start of the game. You'll need travel rations to travel between the zones. And what that means is you'll need two pieces of any type of food and a, and some salt and you can get the salt from salt crystals as you explore and mine. You're going to want a mining pick. A fishing harpoon is optional. I found that I used it a bit at the, at the start of the game but then I stopped using it and sold it to free up more space in my backpack. And once you explore new towns and stuff you can get an upgrade to your backpack which lets you carry more and that's an important upgrade to make if you want to carry a lot more stuff it's also very useful to use the light the bolt rags and the varnishes and the fire rags and the different types of rags and varnishes you find these can make a big difference between survival and death because it enchants your weapon in a sense that it gives it a lot of extra damage and you can take down enemies that are tougher than you by using that, those rags and varnishes, along with traps as well, which are useful. But varnish is better than rags in that it lasts longer, and it might even be a little stronger, the varnish, than the rag. But they definitely help. I wouldn't suggest going to the, the uh, Conflux Mountain ley line to start the game pretty challenging. Uh, it took me exploring the other zones first in order to later come back and get mana. 
when you sacrifice your health and stamina for mana, you could do it as many times as you want. So if you come back, say you get two points of mana, and then later you decide you want four more points, as long as your health and stamina is over 50, you can get more mana. So that's pretty useful. I ended up coming back and getting a lot more mana. But I wouldn't recommend that right at the start of the game. Because those ley lines and those paths to the middle of Complex Mountain are quite challenging. Um, what else can I say about this, this great game? You always want to be prepared on your journey, so make sure you have all your rations, all your food, everything in your backpack. Um, I avoided dungeons to begin with until you have some firepower, like a decent weapon, and some armor. Because you could just end up getting in over your head. Again, the game is not level scaled. So that means that you can run into enemies that are much tougher than you at any point. If you enter the wrong dungeon or the wrong area, you could be in trouble. So I hope these tips are useful. Um, yeah, in let's see, in combat, uh, blocking is very useful, but it uses stamina. I find that I move around better if I don't lock on to the enemy, because when you lock on, you get in this kind of stance that slows your character down. Whereas if you don't lock on, you can run around at full speed and sprint and still hit your enemy. So I find it easier not to lock on in combat at the start of the game, and even later in the game. Make sure you explore, make sure you hit the mining nodes, you'll find places to mine. Make sure you explore as much as you can without getting into areas that are over your head. Look for chests. Often you'll see a pile of rocks and there'll be a supply chest there. Look around for chests and things that you can harvest. Harvest all the food, the gab berries from the bushes, the salt from the salt rocks, and whatever you can mine. Make sure you do that. You can, when you're mining, you can often find a ruby or an emerald or a sapphire, and you can use that, and you can sell those for good amounts of silver. And I would save up the silver in the beginning to buy a good weapon and definitely some armor to protect you. I don't recommend rolling much in combat because it uses much needed stamina, which is pretty precious. You don't want to be out of stamina and even unable to swing at your enemy. So I wouldn't recommend rolling. I would recommend uh, manually moving while not locked on and just moving around your enemies to dodge their attacks. If you find a place that's too hard for you at the beginning, then just make a mental note of it and come back later when you're more prepared when you're stronger you have a stronger weapon you have better armor don't try to fight everything that you see because you're just gonna end in frustration because you're not meant to fight everything that you see especially at the start uh, you have to run quite a bit from the starting enemies or you're gonna be in some trouble So what else is there to say? It's a great game. It's rewarding. I would recommend definitely buying it at a full price, but also playing more than two hours before deciding. I know that you can't refund it after two hours, but it's a game that really takes several hours to start to shine. And the more time you spend with it, the more time you'll see that it's really a great game. It's one of the best games I've played in a while. Uh, I say it's one of the best games ever made, really. And... I've spent about 50 hours with it now, and I just adore it. There's tons of replayability. Depending on which faction you choose, you get three totally unique storylines, and even within those storylines, there's going to be quests and things where you make choices. And there's also going to be things that you miss due to time restrictions. There's time limits on certain quests, and you'll miss those even within your faction quest line. So there's a lot of replayability. Um just a ton, even going through the same faction again a second time will, or even a third time will change pretty pretty drastically depending on how you played it the first time so there's a lot of replayability but my final thoughts are just that it's a great game I love it 
Um, I'm excited what they did with it. I'm excited to see more of what Nine Dot Studio has planned in the future. And I hope you guys play it and I hope you guys enjoy it. And I'm going to end this video because it's 10 minutes long. So thank you for sticking around. And I'll see you in the next J. Dumont RPG Nerd video. So check out my Let's Nerd on my channel for Outward if you're interested in watching me play it. As I go through the game and have some wild and wacky fun. So I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Peace out, everybody.